Hello viewers, a couple of videos ago I showed you the running paint box and in it I mentioned that I have this serial to parallel digital video converter that I was using to uh, record the output onto an SSD and then onto my PC. Now in that video I mentioned that this was a little bit flaky and unfortunately, uh, yes, a couple of days after I shot that video this decided to pretty much pack up altogether. Now I have to be honest, I have already opened this and I have already started to uh, make repairs. It was uh, in the process of doing that that I decided maybe I should film this and let you guys see what I do. So if we start by having a quick tour around, um, it's a big old metal box. I, th I think this dates from the late 1980s, I would imagine. Um, on the front we've got a uh, power switch, the parallel digital video input and the serial outputs. We also have a separate serial input and a parallel output. So you can actually have two things going on here. You could have serial coming in and parallel coming out at the same time as having parallel coming in and two serials coming out. Now, interestingly, um, this does all seem to be made up of lots of different types of connectors. So I kind of wonder whether this has actually been added to over the years. It doesn't look like it's a, a proper production bit of kit. Um, so it does appear to be a bit odd. This, uh, this BNC is different from that one, and that one's different from that one. So I wonder whether things maybe have been repaired over the years. You know, again, there's a, there's a screw there, but without the, the proper threaded insert. So things have been hacked <laughs> around on this a little bit. Uh, round on the back, there's uh, simply power input and nothing else. Um, and of course, you can probably see here, these four BNCs along the bottom are not used. Right, the box is actually already unscrewed, so I can just lift the top off. So it's just a metal cover. Now, unfortunately, we've got all these earth connections, which is a bit tricky to work with. So I'll just run through uh, some of the basic elements of this, and then we'll take the PCB out, and then we'll start repairing it. Now, basically, what this happened with this is the power supplies failed in it. Obviously, it dates from the late 1980s, so it's hardly surprising that power supplies is often... Um, a cause of failure on old bits of kit. So we had the power coming in from the main switch on the front that plugged into a Molex connector just here on the PCB and then we have two footprints for two uh, potted power bricks. These took the 240 volt mains and they dropped that down to 5 volts DC which then went out to the actual logic part of the circuit. These were actually wired in um, plus minus 5 volts configuration and what had happened is the minus 5 volt power supply had actually failed so there was no uh, negative 5 volts on the circuit so obviously it didn't work properly. So what I need to do to fix this is simply replace these power supplies with something else to give me the plus and minus 5 volts and then hopefully it should all spring back to life. Right, I'm going to remove the PCB out of the case just to make it a little bit easier to work on and then I'll explain a little bit more about what the circuit does and uh, we can look about how to actually insert some new power supplies into, uh, into this to get it working. Right, we'll just spend a few moments looking at the circuit board and we will then crack on and hopefully try and get some power supplies into this. So we had the two power bricks, these were mounted here and here. These were mains operated so we actually have mains on the circuit board. I'm going to um, not do that when I come to fix it. I'm going to just have DC on this board and have the mains in a separate chassis power supply mounted underneath this board. So we can see here we have the two 5 volt lines, positive and negative, coming into the circuit through two fuses, a couple of capacitors, then it runs over onto the rest of the circuit. This connector is for the parallel digital video input. So you can quite clearly see here that the connectors run up to this board here and then it runs over to this board here, which is uh, the output, which go, then goes to the coaxial serial digital output. The sort of mirror of that is we have the serial input into this module, which then runs over to this module, and then we have a parallel digital output as well, with some uh, glue logic all in between. Now, the two significant chips on here are um, ST Micro STV. 1602A and STV1601A and those are quite not surprisingly um, serial to parallel converters and parallel to serial converters. 
Uh, up on the top here we have another Molex connector that plugged into a small fan which ran to cool these down because these do actually run quite hot. Um, so they obviously needed a little bit of cooling in there and there's a couple of status LEDs here for plus and minus 5 volts. So um, if they're not lit then you've got a problem on one of your power rails. Uh, we also have a couple of earth connections in here as well that, uh, that run to the case with all those earth wires. Underneath, not really much to see. And a couple of little bodge wires. Now to actually replace the old power supplies that are on this, I was going to use these two Lambda DC to DC converters. Um, these are five volts each, and I could just wire these up as uh, plus and minus five volts. These do have a uh, limit on their current of two amps. Um, unfortunately, it's not quite enough to run this board. I have already powered this up on my bench power supplies and the positive 5 volt draws about 1.5 amps and the minus 5 volts draws about 1.2 amps. So the 1.2 is about okay but um, unfortunately when I was running uh, the test I also didn't have the fan in which draws another 300 milliamps so we're going to be right on uh, the 2 amp limit so I've decided I'm not going to use these now. I've uh, had another rummage around and I found these DC-DC converters which are a bit beefier. Um, these ones are 5 volts at 5 amps. So what I'm planning on doing is installing two of these. One there. And another one there. Um, we'll wire these up as uh, plus minus 5 volts and that will sort out the DC side. And to cover the AC side I'm going to use this frame power supply that I recovered out of a piece of equipment. This is a 12 volt output so I can run the mains into this, have the 12 volt come up onto this board and then these DC DC converters will drop it down to 5 and minus 5 to power the circuits. Right so after a little bit of work uh, what we have here is the actual board. Um, I've just got that there. The, um, this is where the power supplies were. I've reinstated the Molex connector um, and I have mounted a new power supply in the base, so that's uh, mounted on there. And I've made up a cable to run up um, onto the Molex connector to supply the 12 volts to the DC-DC converters. And this is the board that I've prepared to fit in place of those two power bricks. So I just used a prototype board, um, I've just got some single pin headers soldered in there to solder through to the PCB. Thankfully it is the same uh, pin pitch. So I just have the uh, these wires coming over and connecting to the actual pins of the uh, DC-DC converters uh, moving over to the actual pins that then interface onto the PCB. So this can just fit in here into the original points and uh, the 12 volt then can come in and supply the DC-DC converters now one thing I will mention that uh, I unfortunately I didn't really spot before but what I could have actually done is actually mounted this board on the underside of this uh, PCB. Uh, that would have made my life a little bit easier because all of the power traces are actually on the top of the PCB here. That wouldn't normally be a problem but on the underside uh, the PCB is in a bit of a poor state. Um, that pad there was missing when I took this apart, so somebody has obviously already been in here before and uh, pulled that pad off, and that's why there's a little jumper link wire uh, running over to that point there, which is basically mirroring that one there. And that one there fell off about five minutes ago, so I think it probably would have been better if I had mounted this on this side, which would then allowed me to solder up these connections here a lot, lot better than on this side so hindsight is a wonderful thing but there we go I'm sure it'll be all right okay we're a little bit further forward I've installed the power supply uh, well the, the mains power supply down in the base there um, we have the two DC DC converters mounted and soldered in up here uh, and all the board is uh, back in place I have just powered it on and it all turns on just fine so what I need to do now is finish connecting up all of the uh, the wires and everything and I shall give it a test on the paint box. Okay I've got this connected up to the paint box again. I'm running through RGB at the moment so if I flick over to SDI we get a picture. Yay! Fixed. Thanks for watching everybody. See you on the next one.